Well, thank you very much, Mr. Professor. Uh, first and foremost, uh, sorry for me being late, but I, I had a lecture. Well, um, concerning my topic, uh, first and foremost, I'd like to say that practically all contemporary legal systems were at the beginning constructed on the legal customs, then dominated as the sources of law until the times when they were equaled by the laws promulgated by the authorities with the power of a given territory and community living in it. Their task was not pushed back instantly, but on the contrary, often remained in effect for the whole centuries alongside with other sources of law, acting many times in the position of contemporary rules of constitutional laws, expressing the normative principles to which all other rules, not omitting written laws, have to conform the statutes found its reflection in almost all legal systems and the countries of Central and Eastern Europe were not in the peri period of late Middle Ages and early modern history in this sense exception. Since the Middle Ages lasted in the Kingdom of Hungary longer than elsewhere, the same was actually also in relation to the dominance of legal custom that lasted, for example, in contrast to the Austria until the middle of 19th century in spite of gradual strengthening of the position of other sources of law, the legal custom retained the more vitality and ability to meet the social needs, as for example, royal decree issued by king with the approval of estates convened at a diet, royal privilege or current decision. The main credits for this development are attributed to this attributed usually to the protonotary of the High Court, Stephen Verbertsy, that held this function from the beginning of 16th century. Namely, he presented to the Diet of Hungary in uh, 1514, magnificently entitled work, Tripartitum Opus Juris Consuetudinari in Gliti Regni Hungari, containing Hungarian customary law, enriched of certain changes and conclusions of the author that preferred positions of lower class nobility against upper class nobility. Although this compilation was not provided with the royal great seal, in spite of it acquired immediate authority and shaped the Hungarian law until 1848 at latest, nearly in the area of substantial as well as procedural law. Concerning the historical background, although under the rule of Arpad dynasty, the Hungarian rulers came up to the promulgation of several laws, as the most important source remained legal customs. Ascendancy of legal custom endured even the reign of the first Hungarian king, Stephen I, that issued his own law code, markedly influenced by the Frankish Carolinian law and pervaded by Christian spirit. Alongside with royal laws and customs, of which was the most important guaranteeing the privileges of nobility, from those times even other sources of law started to emerge, as for example the rules of municipal law. Later, also the position of courts putting into practice not only own legal customs or style was strengthened, and they even acquired some share at lawmaking. Nevertheless, the Hungarian legal system was far more characterized by the special status and superiority of custom that lasted after all to the half of 19th century. This is evident especially from the acceptance of the fact that royal laws had to be legitimized by legal customs. The source of law, at the same time, it closed the legal system towards the influences of the Roman canon law, or so-called Ius Commune and by the scrupulous protection of the rights of the nobility, contributed also the considerable political particularism. Concerning its character, it met from the beginning all of the characteristics of traditional theoretical, as well as historical definitions, as non-written source of law derived from the community itself, that its members consider to be generally binding and sanction its violation. After the death of Sigismund of Luxembourg, the Diet of Hungary achieved important position of a body representing the estates of the kingdom, whereby from those times, 
was accepted the conclusion that low may be passed by the proper economy diet after its, its adjustment by the king, his signing and impressing a seal. Similar attitude, inspired in a way by the Roman law of Justinian, adopted also the king Matthias Corvinus, that tried to codify the Hungarian law, issuing his law in so-called Decretum Maius, an effort to restrain the influence of customary law. His goal was also to enforce the radical centralization of the administration of the country, suppressing the impact of upper-class nobility disposing until then of determining influence on the motion of state and guaranteed untouchability. The sovereign Vladislaus II found a way to improve the legal system in drawing up the customary law of the country. Rather, struggle to synthesize the national law was connected especially with the need to elucidate the legal system and current application practice since the parties before the court in common referred to different rules that contradicted directly or indirectly each other. After an successful attempt to entrust this task to the protonotary Adam Lishkai, the King Vladislav II finally extended his request to include all the Kareta published in the kingdom and asked the protonotary Stefan Verbozzi to perform this mission. Considering the author, according to the majority of scientists, individuality of elaboration of the Opus Tripartitum reflects not only the legal political situation of the Kingdom of Hungary, but in several aspects also the personality of the author himself, his education, legal thinking and goals he followed. Since the final form, especially the prologue, of his work party evokes at least fundamental knowledge of the institutions of Roman law, most polemics in the scientific community were related to the place of his university studies. Nevertheless, it is generally accepted that he spent only a few months at the university in Krakow. Even though such an attitude was not extraordinary, since the length of the studies naturally depended only on the will of student and sufficiency of the resources, and didn't disqualify him from the future legal practice in any way. His skills, then Stephen Verbozzi developed by learning of Hungarian legal practice, would found his reflection especially in his activities of politician, officer, judge, diplomatist, or juridical scholar, and finally the author of Opus Tripartitum. Concerning his political orientation during his Career, he advocated especially the rights of lower class nobility that on a long term basis endeavored to strengthen its influence in the royal curia and achieve the same position in the royal council and in holding of the highest state offices as upper class nobility. As a peak of his career, we may designate the short term position of the Palatine, hence the second important office after the royal one. As pointed out, recording of customary law and other relevant rules was entrusted to Stefan Verbozzi as one of the most recognized legally educated men of the Kingdom of Hungary that worked as protonotary of the High Court, significant politician and representative of the interests of the no lower class nobility. His task was in the concrete to organize logically and systematically valid laws, legal customs, and other general binding or individual legal acts, of which we may mention the charters of privileges and legal material accumulated by the court practice. Verbots himself, namely imagined under the term of customary law practically all substantive and procedural rules that kept their authority in the kingdom by their using in courts, even without its formal approbation. Therefore, enormous material had to be gathered relating to the real causes that were further accepted, indexed and collected to the final text, consisting at last of 700 manuscript pages. Although Stephen Berbozzi many times declared his will to replicate only the traditional Hungarian customs, Several excerpts prove he imprinted his own interpretation to many sources, namely in an effort to meet the contemporary 
uh, typically political, of course, views, remove the inconsistencies or to improve the original text. Some parts of the collections, moreover, indicate that, compi that compiler adjusted them not only in the sense de lege lata, but rather de lege ferenda. And that is the reason why we may speak on the individual revision or legal modernization. Stephen Verbozzi finished his codification works in 1514 and in the form of Solar Royal Bill proposed it under the title Opus Repartitum Juris Consultum to Dinari in Gliti Regni Hungariae as the customary law of the renowned Kingdom of Hungary in three parts. At first to the country diet that congregated on 18th October 1514. The king himself did not regard as necessary to examine, examine the work more closely and approved it on 19 November by his solemn bill. In addition, he promised at the Diet to send the duplicates of Opus Tripartitum to the country districts. After all, the sovereign didn't keep his promise, neither appended the seal to the solemn bill containing the text of the collection, nor came up to its promulgation in the form of its distribution through royal chancery. In such a way, it was desist of necessary request for the validity, and on that basis could not formally come into effect and have obligatory legal force. The attitude of the king did not discourage Stephen Verbozzi, that chose other option. At first, he customized Opus Triparty to moderately, added the salutation to the reader and dedication to the ruler. Then, in 1517, he printed it as his own expenses at the Viennese letterpress printer Johannes Ingrenius and sent it off to the district as well as country cards. Well, considering the structure of the compilation, Stephen Verbozzi chose three-part division, typical for those times regarding the par perfection of this number, of course, with the reference to the Hall of Trinity, respectively, original resolution to proceed in accordance with the classical textbook, Instituciones or the Roman lawyer Gaius. Prologue of 16 titles preceded also the individual parts of the work, this usually describes a set, certain theoretical legal introduction to the collection, whereas individual parts may be characterized as the outcomes of the Hungarian legal practice and personal contribution of the author. The prog itself represents only the poor quality compilation of the older works that he knew directly or had at disposal. Well, concerning the nature of the pro prologue, uh, we may say that it's rather theoretical than legal. First part is divided into 134 titles, and there the author dealt with almost whole area of substantial law in the concrete personal donative pledge, hereditary and partly also contractual law, concentrating almost exclusively on the nobility. Second part, consisting of 86 titles, was mostly oriented on the sources of law and procedural law. The third part, structured into 36 titles, there the author dealt with special particular laws, especially municipal, Transylvania, Croatian, Slavonic and rules regulating the status of bondsmen. In the conclusion, finally Stephen Verbozzi explained in more detail his language and chosen terminology. Uh, let's take a look for, uh, at the sources he used. Although Stefan Verbozzi asserted elaboration of his work in accordance with the Hungarian customs, and we may more or less agree with such a statement, uh, most scientific polemics were related to the sources used while comp compiling the prologue. As non-expert in Roman law, he declared that customary law of the Kingdom of Hungary interpreted on the Roman law principles and following the divisions accepted by classical Roman law, then persone, res and actiones. As evident, this, res this resolution at last failed because of several peculiarities of Hungarian legal system. On the account, for First and longest part of the Opus Tripartitum actually combines persona and res, since the author himself admitted impossibility of separation one from an, 
from an other, and second part contains mostly axioms. In spite of it, aforementioned indicates that at least prologue was elaborated using several Romanist ideas and bases. Although the majority of researchers agree the same attitude chose Stephen Verbots who were working with church texts, several indications points out his minimally basic knowledge of theology and canon law. The latter finally completely dominated in the Roman canon procedure that he had to master as a judge. In the prologue itself, we find several extensive passages taken verbatim from the works of famous theologians as well as canonists. Of them, we may mention first and foremost the canonist Gratian, since primarily distinctions to his Concordia Discordantium Canonu, well, so-called Decretum Graziani, provided the author of the Opus Tripartitum with enormous amount of material, namely in the elaboration of theoretical legal fundamentals of such important topics as, for example, legal custom. Several characteristics of the law he derived then from the classical Summa Theologica of Thomas Aquinas, and his reflections are evident also from other parts of his work. Stephen Verbozzi included even the references to other canonistic works, as for example, Summa Aurea of Cardinal Hostienzis. Concerning the legal custom, as evident from the whole conception of the Opus Tripartitum, it practically constricted the Hungarian law and customary law basements for the whole centuries, whereby also the obligatory force of this collection was derived from it. To excuse this attitude, Stephen Verbozzi had to del delineate the conception of law according to these premises. Use itself, in his interpre interpretation, consisted of approved customs and usages of the community, and task of the statutes was to record and promulgate customary law, considered even beforehand to be binding. The author of the Opus Tripartitum presented I indirectly, that law ought not to be created by the sovereign, not even courts, since their practice is rather proof than a reason generating use. The authority of use non, the non scriptum was then tacitus consensus populi, the lawgiver had to reveal and express and judge apply. In accordance with the conviction of Stephen Verbozzi, all the customary law of the Kingdom of Hungary was preserved right in his compilation. It is all the more interesting that Opus Tripartitum itself is in substantial parts almost never refers to the legal customs and its rules are from the formal point of view presented as quasi written laws. Although the majority of researchers admit that the treatise on the custom is derived from the work of famous Romanist Bartolus de Sassoferrato, Closer, anal closer analysis indicates his doctrine was almost entirely taken from the classical canonists. Even its definition, including introductory theoretical treatise Stephen Verbozzi borrowed from Gratian Decretum. Because con biggest controversies in the scientific literature were related to the conception of Stephen Verbozzi concerning the relationship between customs and laws. As evident, logic of his methodological, mostly politically motivated attitude, forcing to place consuetudo on top of his sources, no matter if it competed with royal edicts, charters of privileges, cur decisions, or decreta regni. Not even the law itself, in his opinion, legislated, created, or presenting the will of the community because it represents use already existing within the frame of approved customs of the given society. All those statutes only record and declare customary laws, which were previously recognized as binding. Even in this respect, we find some, inconsist some inconsistencies between the scholarly treatise in the prologue to the collection and the normative, normative text itself. In the prologue, Influenced by canon law and Bartolistic attitudes, Stephen Verbozzi at first asserted that consuetudo and decretum are the same source of same legal force, are the sources of same legal force. On the account, if statutory law follows custom against law, statute has to prevail. 
On the other hand, a statute precedes established custom or later must dominate. At the same time, he presented the generally accepted custom, abrogate statutes valid in the whole territory of the Kingdom of Hungary, whereas local custom prevails only in the given territory. In addition to the derogatory and abrogatory function, the custom could also interpret and complement law. From the interpretation point of view, it was, for example, possible to interpret problematic provisions of the law to legal custom. Complementary function then manifested in the process of filling up the existing lacuna iures, namely within the frame of appreciating the legal conditions per analogia. It is therefore evident that in the normative text itself, the author of Opus Tripartitum abandoned the opinions from prologue and started to perceive Lex Lex and Consuetudo as two individual sources of use and accepted them rather as two elements constituting one organic unit capable of mutual complementing and influencing. As indicated, Opus Tripartitum was the result of codification efforts that started to appear from the times of late Middle Ages, also in the rest of Europe. From the validity point of view, it acquired the status of source of law in several countries, not only in those attached to the Kingdom of Hungary, summarizing we may refer to Transylvania, Northern Croatia, Northern part of Serbia, especially Vojvodina, but also Poland, of course, in these countries, it did not get the character of dominating source of law, but only supplemented extensity of the rules there applied. Opus Tripartitum is very similar by its content to other medieval codes containing the collective various types of the sources of secular law. We may refer especially to the German Sachsenspiegel or Schwabenspiegel, English compilation of Henry de Bracton and Renaud de Anville, French code of Philippe de Beaumanoir, and other similar works. Several researchers, moreover, agree that work of Stephen Verbertsy may be specified as official compilation of customary law, which were really widely expanded in 15th and 16th century in France, Germany, or Netherlands. Despite of plenty in sufficiencies, we may thus consider the compilation of Stephen Verbertsy to be the most important medieval as well as modern source of law coming from the territory of Middle and Eastern Europe. As indicated, the period of late Middle Ages and early modern times may be described as the stage of legal stabilization and even the area of Central and Eastern Europe was not exception within this context. Whereas other countries built their legal systems upon the premises of use commune and transformed their own legal customs in its spirit in the Kingdom of Hungary dominated from the second decade of 16th century this source of law in the form expressed in the work of Stephen Verbertsy. Although in the Western Europe the written law was gradually advanced, the Hungarian law remained furthest in the customary form. However, several representatives of the jurisprudence were conscious of the fact that legal custom may be evaluated first and foremost as a relic of Middle Ages. At the same time, they adjudicated it the value of heritage or ascendance and in several aspects also of national identity. The change didn't happen even by the acquiring of the Hungarian throne by the sovereigns of the Habsburg dynasty in 1526, in spite of the fact that the authority of written law party increased. Customary law prevailed even though Opus Tripartitum was in later editions commonly published along with the Creta and other various supplementary material that also reflected the provisions of this compilation. Well, we may mention um, several negatives of this compilation, for example, uh, keeping a life obsolete and archaic institution, its backwardness, and the legal insecurity and several abuses of law that were connected with it. 
even though this compilation managed to keep its continual influence not only on the legal practice itself, but also on Hungarian political thinking and development of legal, legal conscience. Although Opus Tripartitum didn't become law, it represents the main work of Hungarian medieval law with several overlaps to neighboring countries. Well, thank you very much for your attention.